Minnesota for a Midwest region first round battle between the Southland Conference champions, the Indians of Northeast Louisiana and the Duke Blue Devils of the Atlantic Coast Conference. This is the first of four here. The winner will go on and meet the survivor of Iowa and East Tennessee State later. And tonight, two games coming up, including the big one between LSU and Connecticut. So Duke is seated number two, 15 for Northeast Louisiana. And good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. And Duke has made a habit of getting to the Final Four four times in the last five years. And they begin their excursion this afternoon against Northeast Louisiana. And they start from Minneapolis, not from East Rutherford, where they normally have ended up in the East. Well, let's go back to last year when Duke for the third straight year out of East Rutherford got to the final four by virtue of this dramatic last shot by Christian Leitner to beat University of Connecticut to advance to the final four a big win for the Duke Blue Devils. Meanwhile, Northeast Louisiana, the champions of the Southland Conference out of Monroe, Louisiana, come in with a winning streak of 16 games, tied for second behind mighty UNLV in Division I play in the NCAA tournament, tournament. And I'm glad to welcome back to CBS my old partner, Billy Cunningham. Billy, what were your impressions of the Indians yesterday when we saw them work out? Well, their concentration level and their confidence was very high. Of course, winning 16 in a row. And two key players for this ball club today are in Anthony Jones, who has that ability to hit the jump shot, put it on the floor and take it to the basket. And the other key player is Carlos Funches. Carlos can post up on the inside, hit the perimeter shot, and he's their top rebounder. And Coach Vining feels he must have a big game for them. Mike Vining knows he has his hands full against Duke, but Duke is coming off a loss to North Carolina in the ACC title game. They are, and the big thing is, are they going to look ahead of this Northeast Louisiana ball club? Because if they do, Northeast Louisiana can come out here, get a little confidence, and hit a few shots, and before you know it, we have a good game. Tell me about the leader. Who do you think may be a key guy for Duke in this first-round game? Well, Coach Krzyzewski feels Mike, uh, um, Bobby Hurley has got to get off to a good start. He feels his confidence is down, and the way he gets it back is being aggressive defensively. All right, so uh, Mike Krzyzewski obviously is no stranger to this tournament. Mike Vining has been here before. Here's what the coaches have to say. We're bigger uh, with Leitner, uh, but then after that, we... We get to be about the same size real quick, so I'm, I'm sure that they're confident that they can uh, play against us and that Leitner probably is the biggest problem going into the game for them. My concern is that, that they are successful in taking us out uh, of our offense, uh, that we do not create some turnovers with our pressure, that when we take chances, they burn us on the other end and lay it up, and then our kids uh, maybe get their heads down and say, uh, well, this pressure is not paying off. Billy, what can we expect in this first round? Well, I think we're going to see a team, Northeast Louisiana, is going to put full court pressure, look to trap, create havoc out there on the court, whereas Duke, they'd like to see that because they feel they can really attack that trap and be successful. All right, let's take a look now at the starting lineups for the game. Funches and Anthony Jones, the big two for Northeast Louisiana. Duke has a lineup change. Senior Greg Kubek is starting at forward in place of Brian Davis, along with Grand Hill, the outstanding freshman, Christian Leitner, Hurley, and Thomas Hill. The officials working this first game, Bobby Dibler, Danny Hooker, and Ted Valentine. Duke coming in as a second seed. A lot of people perhaps surprised that the Blue Devils were moved to the Midwest region after losing to North Carolina out of the comfortable East for them the last few years. Yeah, I was a little surprised because seeing Ohio State lose two consecutive games, still maintaining their number one seed. Duke is in white, the home of the top-seeded team, and the each game always wears the white uniform. Northeast Louisiana Indians out of Monroe, Louisiana. They've got an enrollment of a little over 11,000 here. They had to beat Florida A&M in the play-in to get to this tournament, but here they are. And the big thing you can just see out there is size. You know, their biggest player on the court is Philip Craig, and he's 6'9", but he's not an aggressive player, so that could be a problem for them. The tip is controlled by Duke Kubek with the ball. One of the things Mike Krzyzewski wanted to do to stop this ball game was to make sure everybody handles the ball, and that's not one of the ways he wanted them to handle the basketball. Leitner was looking for a pass inside. There were no Duke players underneath. 
Casey and, Jones, the point guard. And you'll see a very patient team, and they're concerned, as my, Coach Finding said, is the overplay of Duke. And they pass the ball, and now I'm sure they're going to have those jitters, and they're just good patience offensively. Philip Craig, the 6'9 big man, is playing outside now. Casey Jones is the point guard. He is 5'7. And here's their star, the Greyhound, Anthony Jones. And a foul committed by Kubek going after Chad Jacobs on the pass and the first foul of this game. So, so far, at least their first set, they were able to execute their offense. And this is a team that will show a great deal of patience, Northeast Louisiana, when they get to their set offense. But I'll tell you what, when they get out there defensively after scoring, you're going to see havoc. Anthony Jones is defended by Grant Hill. And the first shot of the game by Anthony Jones, who comes in averaging 21 a game. Here's the pressure you talked about. Grand Hill going to the baseline. Tipped away and stolen by Carlos Funches. Kubek gets back defensively. Funches misses the jumper. And Anthony Jones is fouled again, and Kubek picks up an early two foul. And right off the bat, we do see their two stars, Funches and Anthony Jones, really contributing to this ball club. And it's so important. The first two plays, we see this can be invaluable to them, gaining confidence, hitting the jump shot, and creating the turnover. Kubek, who started for the first time in several games, goes out replaced by Brian Davis, who had been the starter. So the senior, one of two on the Blue Devils, is on the bench with two fouls. Early defending Casey Jones. Grand Hill has four inches on Anthony Jones. Good patience offensively, moving the ball, good and steal. Steal by Grand Hill, who's made a fantastic impact, maybe the best freshman in the country. Scoring for Duke, he's averaged over 11 a game. And he's leap, leaps and bounds since the beginning of the year, the way he's contributing to this Blue Devil team. Now on the rebounding, he's such a factor. Funches is 34, Anthony Jones is three. The two men to watch. There's the lob pass inside, a little short. Grand Hill knocks it down the lake. In the lane is Grand Hill, and batted away by Chad Jacobs, and another turnover. Pulling up. And hitting a two-point basket is Anthony Jones, his second of the game. And that's another dimension to this ball cape. The ball club, Funches and Anthony Jones, are both shooting over 40% from the three-point line. is a 51% shooting club, the same as the Blue Devils. But a big factor is the defense overall of the Duke ball club is it better, because Northeast Louisiana is allowing the opposition to shoot 50%. There's where Duke can really go to town as Christian Leitner goes over Philip Craig. And one of the things that Coach Vining was concerned with to just not concentrate too much on Leitner where the other Blue Devils would hurt them. So they'll look to help out, but they're not going to just go double team and allow other people to have easy shots. Right here we've seen that Duke Blue Devil defense forcing Anthony Jones to handle the ball too much and not able to swing it. Now here's the post up by Leitner. Look at this strong move to the middle. No help coming from anywhere. They're going to have to help out on Leitner when he makes that move. Ryan Davis picks up the foul for Duke. Three team fouls against the Blue Devils. None so far against the Indians. Philip Craig. Mick gives up the shot. Jacobs in the corner has Anthony Jones. Misses a three, tipped up and in by Funches, and he scores his first points. Well, if nothing else, Northeast Louisiana has gotten the, te the attention of the Blue Devils. They know they're in for a battle. This team is going to come out and compete hard against them. Pass into Leitner is short, tipped away by Craig. Here's the lead pass to Anthony Jones, and he slams it through. And the Indians lead it 8-4 to four early on. Duke has turned it over four times so far, and it's hurt. And just careless ball handling. That, that time, Hurley, just a lazy pass to Leitner, who was posted, who was being fronted by Craig. Thomas Hill into Leitner. Leitner gets his second basket, coming in averaging 20 points a game, despite a leg bruise, which was aggravated in the Carolina game. Seems to be all right. 
Eight to six the score in favor of Northeast Louisiana. This is the start of things in Minneapolis. Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham in the first round action. Funches shot, missed, and Davis gets the rebound, loses it, and Funches converts on yet another turnover by Duke. Now that's an area you don't expect Duke to get hurt on. You know, uh, careless ball handling and getting hurt on the offensive boards. You, they're just too good of a ball club to allow that to happen. Leitner didn't know whether to shoot or pass. Fortunately, he got it to Grand Hill. Thomas Hill inside. He can beat you inside or in the perimeter. And the score now is 10-8. to eight. Well, right away we see what Duke can do offensively that can hurt Northeast Louisiana. Show patience and get the ball inside. Leighton has been able to score, and now we see Hill posting up. Firing from the corner is Casey Jones. He's averaging nine a game and a 40% shooter from three-point range and hits a three. That's a three-point basket for Casey Jones. 13 to 8, and the biggest lead thus far for the Indians. Davis comes in and gets a bucket. And there's that pressure, and they're able to attack it, and that's what Mike Krzyzewski wants his ball club to do. Perfect shooting for the Duke Blue Devils, but five turnovers have allowed the Indians to take the early lead. And an errant pass, and that'll be turned over as Hurley finds Thomas Hill, basket, and the foul by Funches inside. I don't know what Funches was thinking about there. He should have picked the ball up, even though it was in the backcourt. At the worst, it just gives possession to Duke. And now he lets it go. Hurley finds the Hill, and there's a, this is a chance for a three-point play. See, he should have picked it up right there. Touched the ball. Then it goes side out of bounds to Duke. And here's the careless pass. Funches had a chance to get a hand on this ball. Doesn't. Hill, who is so good and strong, going to the basket. Bunch is committing the personal foul. And a three-point play can tie this game for Hill. Each team has brought in a reserve. Chris Kreese, a 6'3 senior from Houston, comes in for Northeast Louisiana. And hot shooting Bill McCaffrey has come in for the Duke Blue Devils. We'll be back. Going on in the East Region at College Park, those four games scheduled for today in third seeded Oklahoma State against New Mexico early on in the first half. So McCaffrey replaced Thomas Hill in the backcourt for Duke, and there's full court pressure in a five second violation. Or was it a timeout? Timeout. Timeout was called by the Indians. So we're going to take another break. First time that Mike Vining's team has seen the full court pressure. Back here in Minneapolis, tie score, Northeast Louisiana against Duke. The Blue Devils have never led in this game, as the Indians have scored on four of Duke's five turnovers thus far. Chris Kreese has come in the game. He is playing a forward position, replacing Chad Jacob. And so far in this game, it's been the turnovers. Six by uh, Northeast Louisiana for nine points for Duke. And Duke has turned it over six times for six points for uh, Northeast Louisiana. Funches going baseline is surrounded and loses the ball and out of bounds. It's still Northeast possession. Well, one of the things is they have to stay within their offense, Northeast Louisiana. When they get out of it, that's when Duke is most effective defensively and creating turnovers. Philip Craig, the big man, surrounded. His own coach, Mike Vining, said not the most aggressive big man you'll find in college basketball. Mike Vining, who played guard at NLU, was an assistant coach for three years and has been a head coach for 10 at the Monroe, Louisiana School. Funches shooting over Hill. Craig gets the rebound and lays it in. And that could be a big goal for Craig, that he might just gain a little confidence out there playing against an All-American like Christian Leitner. Craig is averaging five points a game going up against Leitner. Good dish. Grand Hill misses the stuff after a fine feed from Hurley, and now is a two-on-one break with Kreese to Anthony Jones, and now the Indians have moved out to a 17-13 lead. Four for five for Anthony Jones, who has eight points and is the high scorer for either side, and will have a foul against NLU. 
Now, here, watch the hands of Casey Jones just knocking it free. And now Anthony Jones making the pass. He increased, making a fine move and scoring the two points. Casey Jones on the other side picks up the foul. The other Casey Jones we know has initials. He spells his name C-A-S-E-Y. Yep. And, and then there's a steal and another layup by Anthony Jones. Well, Mike Krzyzewski has to be very upset with the ball handling and the concentration level of his Duke Blue Devil ball club at this point. Six turnovers by Duke in the first eight minutes. And here's the steal, the quickness of Anthony Jones running that ball down. Boy, these kids, you just have to think so much of them that they're coming in here playing a, an outstanding Duke ball club and showing them no respect. Biggest lead right now for the Indians of Northeast Louisiana. McCaffrey looking inside for Leighton. And Craig is doing a nice job right now fronting Christian Leighton, forcing the ball to be thrown over the top. Early lost concentration for the moment. I think they rattled Duke a little bit. Yeah, they're a little passive out here, just passing the ball in the perimeter, not aggressive defense offensively. Probably because of the turnovers there. That'll be another Indian foul. It'll be the 14th foul of this first half, and that will be against Chris Kreese, who's come in and pick up his first foul, his second personal foul. Thomas Hill returns to the game, and Grant Hill gets a rest. Chad Jacobs has started the game for the Indians. Reese going to the bench with two Your personal fouls. Lindner is short with it, but inside with the layup is Ryan Davis. And, that, and that's an area you expect this team to be hurt on, hurt on the offensive glass. They're just going to have to have everybody contribute, all five players on the defensive boards. I'm going to say, despite the fact that Duke has been shaking so far, although they get a turnover here, they have stayed very close. Nothing to be concerned about. Thomas Hill is short with the jumper. Rebound by Anthony Jones. He was awfully hesitant on that jump shot. He wasn't sure, should I shoot the jump shot, bring it back out? But again, we're seeing turnovers. And, really, you know, honestly, it's just been a sloppy uh, first half so far. And it's worked in the favor of Northeast Louisiana. Double-team trap on Casey Jones finds Craig the big man. Now McCaffrey is guarding Anthony Jones, who has scored 10 points thus far. This is off in the jump shot by Jacobs misses, and a foul, and they're going to, or out of bounds, it'll be Duke's ball. Greg Kubek, who went out early with two personal fouls, checks back into the game, replacing Christian Leitner. And we're going to see our first look at Rodney Redmond. Carlos Funches goes out. There's Redmond, who's averaging four points a game, a junior from Marks, Mississippi. So that's a big substitution, though. Now Duke really has a even a bigger advantage in, in size with a Redmond six feet tall replacing the 6'4 Funches. Except Leitner went out, so they lost the big man there. Looking for an opening. Hits the shot. First basket of the game for Bobby Hurley. You mentioned trying to get his confidence back. Yeah, and he's a streaky three-point shooter. And, 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 you know, he needs to be streaky now for six games for Mike Krzyzewski to get back to the finals. Northeast Louisiana nearly doubling Duke's output in scoring in the backcourt. That was off the foot of Anthony Jones. And here's a freshman from Mobile, Alabama, Antonio Lang, who started several games early this season. He has come into the game. So right now for Duke, Bobby Hurley and Bill McCaffrey in the backcourt. Up front, it's Lang, Kubek, and Thomas Hill. And Lang lays it in. It's essentially three guards in there for Duke. Well, the, the key was the great bounce pass by Bobby Hurley, just hitting Lang in the perfect spot where he just had to turn and lay it in. Duke is on a 6 to nothing run right now to tie the game. And we, and we see with this smaller lineup in there for Duke, they've become even more aggressive overplaying the passing lanes and taking this uh, of the Indians out of their set offense. Carlos Funches returns to the game replacing Philip Craig, so now Northeast Louisiana gets smaller 
to try to match some of the quickness that Duke has shown. And Chris Kreese returns as well. He's playing with two fouls. About halfway through this opening stanza, Bobby Hurley is fouled. Let's see if Casey Jones gets called for it. If it, so, it'll be his second. The personal for Northwest Louisiana, number 14, Casey Jones, his second, team fifth. Duke is looking for its first lead of the game. Thomas Hill gives it to him. And Thomas Hill averaging 12 points a game, and the Blue Devils are up 21 to 19. And it appears that Mike Krzyzewski has found the lineup to his suit, to his like, liking. And there's another offensive foul and a turnover. Rodney Revin that time. All of a sudden, the Indians have fallen prey to the quickness and the small lineup of the Duke Blue Devils. That is the 16 foul and one more. Blue Devils will be in the bonus. And another problem is uh, Mike Vining uh, has had to call a timeout already in this first half, and I'm sure he'd like to save them because right now, uh, the way Duke is going, they're really on a roll defensively and executing offensively. Pass inside, no look from Hurley. Hill missed it, Lang couldn't handle it, but it's still Duke's ball. Early on, Duke turned the ball over six times, but the Indians have four turnovers in their last five possessions, and it's cost them the lead. Early inside to Kubek, Lang underneath, fights his way in, and Funches comes down with it. 9.05 to go, Thomas Hill will be hit. That'll be the 14th foul against the Blue Devils and the first against the sophomore guard from Lancaster, Texas. First one number 12, four out of five years, the Blue Devils have gone to the final four and got to the championship in two of them. What a great achievement. Great program they have in Durham. And he's really developed a great program, Mike Krzyzewski. Duke was known in the past. They'd have a couple good years, and then they'd fall to a little as a, as a program. But now he's been able to sustain it. Greg Kubek commits the Duke foul. That'll be his third personal foul, the first player to pick up three and five team fouls now against Duke. One of the big things Mike Vining has got to decide is how can he open up and free up his um, uh, receivers in the passing lanes because of the defensive pressure being applied by Duke. Kubek goes down with uh, three fouls to the bench, and Christian Leitner and Grant Hill both come in. So let's see how Duke does now that they have a little bigger team in there than the smaller club that got them the lead. I think one of the factors now is they have to, whoever Leitner is going to be guarding, because there's such a small team out there in northeast Louisiana, that player has to always make himself available as a passing outlet because of the pressure that they're applying. These free throws by Chris Kreese are the first free throws of the game by Northeast Louisiana. He makes one out of two. Later with the rebound. Duke by one with just under nine minutes to go in the first half. McCaffrey in the lane. Bill McCaffrey, who's been very well in the ACC tournament. They need him for the perimeter shooting. Has found the shooting eye again. Pittsburgh and Georgia in a tight game in Louisville, and the same for New Mexico and Oklahoma State at College Park underway as well. Chris Kreese tipped up and in by Funches. Chris Funches, he says it's not how high you jump, but how quick you do it, and he did it quickly there. He's in the right place at the right time now, three times. McCaffrey hits his second in a row. And the pace picks up here, and Duke leads by three. Well, Mike Krzyzewski just does an excellent job rotating his people, finding the right combinations. Steal by Thomas Hill. And Duke has opened up now a seven-point lead, their biggest lead of this first half, making a five-point advantage. Now the poise and the patience of Northeast Louisiana is going to be put to the test. They need a good shot down the court this time. 
Funches on the run is short with it. The rebound by Grand Hill. Duke has two players releasing. Leitner and Thomas Hill. And Thomas Hill now gives Duke a seven-point lead. And they did not have the patience offensively, Northeast Louisiana. Took a bad shot, and it led to that easy opportunity for Duke. Thomas Hill is 5 for 7 of the, from the field with 11 points. He's matched the season's average. Casey Jones penetrating, gets the basket, and draws the foul. And now NLU comes back. But that's not the kind of shot they want to have. They want to make a couple passes and then get the good opportunity. We're at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. First round action in the Midwest region. Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham. Want to remind you that regularly scheduled program will resume on Monday here on CBS. And we're happy to bring you March Madness and the NCAA tournament from round one to the final four. Exclusively here on CBS. Ryan Davis now in the Duke lineup. Curly goes for three. Misses the rebound by Chris Kreese. Duke by five. They're in the white uniforms. And the Indians in maroon and gold. Trying to get the steal as McCaffrey nearly made it against Redmond. Baseline move and Kreese. But it was Funches who set it up with it. Yep, his quickness on the baseline and a fine bounce pass. The key word for Northeast Louisiana offensively, patience, and make that pass execute. And by and large, I think they've shown a lot of that. And when they don't, it leads to an easy two. McCaffrey is hot. He has six points and has hit all three of his shots today. There's that good defensive pressure by, by Duke. Redmond lost the ball, kicked out of bounds. Grand Hill is doing a terrific job of denying Anthony Jones the ball. Jones scored 10 points early and has been shut out as of late. And we'll take a timeout with the Blue Devils up. Timeout. Duke, one of the best in the NCAA tournament over the years. Look at the shooting of this game, over 60% for both. Thomas Hill leads the Blue Devils, but Anthony Jones has been quiet for a while, Bill. Yeah, have, has not been able to get his hands on the ball because of the good defense and denial by this Duke ball club. You know, one thing about Duke, this is the finest athletic team. What a move to the basket, missed dunk. Finest athletic team that Mike Krzyzewski's been able to put together. And we're seeing a little of that athleticism. Brian Davis and Thomas Hill are two that fit the bill. Well, when you have your cent when you have your center leading your team in steals, that tells you something. Welcome to Minneapolis, Northeast Louisiana, trying to hang in against Duke, and are they ever? Casey Jones, the five foot seven senior backcourt man, has just hit his second three-point basket of the game to bring the Indians in Northeast Louisiana to within four of the Duke Blue Devils, the heavy favorites in round one here in the Midwest region in Minneapolis. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham, and there was Philip Craig, the center who picks up his first round well so far it's been a game of turnovers both teams creating a lot of opportunities offensively from the defensive end of the court overplaying denying creating those turnovers are you surprised that duke has been a little uh, skittish thus far with the ball a little time with yes and uh, you know they haven't shown the patience to get the ball inside where they've been very successful offensively the winner of this game will face the survivor of a great test between iowa and east tennessee state later on and of course tonight It'll be LSU with Shaquille O'Neal against UConn and Nebraska. Xavier round out the four games in the first round. Christian Leitner hits both free throws, and it's 35-29 to 29 Duke. They have trailed early by as many as six. Five ten remaining in the first half. Blue Devils already in the bonus. Next foul by them will put the Indians in the bonus. And a five-second violation called against Northeast Louisiana. You know, all your defense starts with your lead guard. And Bobby Hurley is the catalyst out here today, applying that great defensive pressure, as we just saw, and making it difficult for Jones to make that pass. Grand Hill. 
Guarded by Chris Kreese, giving up four inches. Here's Christian Layton. Philip Craig, 6'9", center, gets the rebound, and here is Kreese going in and is fouled by Leitner. That'll be his first of the game. That was such a smart play by Christian Kreese because he went in there, number one, he, he, in his mind, he said, well, I'm going to get to the foul line, and if I get a chance to make the basket, that's fine, but I'm going to draw the foul first. Kreese will go to the line. Duke. One of the final four for the last five years. Duke is now shooting 70%, but the Indians have nothing to sneeze at with their 62. And they've been able to hit a few three-pointers. Yes, they have. Two by Casey Jones, their point guard. Right now, Anthony Jones is the leading scorer for NLU with 10, and Thomas Hill, unlikely leading scorer for Duke with 11. Normally, you don't expect a lot of points from Thomas Hill. The, the, the big reason is the turnovers, and he's been able to get out and finish it off on fast-breaking situations. Other scores. Mexico and Oklahoma State are at halftime. McCaffrey. Anthony Jones tips it to Casey. A little tight mark. Good job. There's an example where McCaffrey should have made sure he got to the foul line and drew the foul. Out of bounds. It'll be controlled by Northeast Louisiana. And Mike Krzyzewski will go to his bench and bring back Thomas Hill, who is his leading scorer with 11. Sitting down is Brian Davis. Less than four and a half minutes to play in the opening half here in Minneapolis. Crowd on hand for this afternoon session of the first round. Carlos Funches. Good crisp passing by the Indians. Anthony Jones with the jumper, and that's his first point in quite a while. All started with Funches' penetration, forcing the help defensively, and they were able to swing the ball. Coming back, the left-handed shooting Thomas Hill hits. He's got 13. Anthony Jones has hit 6 of 11. Those two have been the only double-figure scorers thus far in the game. Both teams in the bonus. Five-point lead for Duke. Leitner way out to guard Philip Craig, the other center. And I think that's something they'll have to continue to do to relieve that pressure defensively, bringing Leitner out there on the court. Anthony Jones kicked his own dribble out of bounds, so another turnover by Northeast Louisiana, their 10th of this first half. And a timeout here at the Metrodome with Duke of the ACC leading by five. Well, this great basketball carnival continues. Here are the games coming up next. First round coverage. Pepperdine against Seton Hall. Are they a red hot team? New Orleans against Kansas of the Big Eight. Southern Mississippi versus North Carolina State. And right here in Minneapolis, East Tennessee State against Iowa. And a steal right there. Great play by Northeast Louisiana. Chad Jacobs misses the layup inside. That's a couple they've missed inside. Ten turnovers so far for NLU. And for the year, they've only averaged 13. Leitner fouled by Philip Craig, and he'll shoot two. Now, right there was an example. Duke executing their offense so well, they cleared out the weak side, the side away from the basketball, and that allowed that lob pass and an easy opportunity for Leitner. Great second personal foul. Both teams have been in the bonus. That was the eighth team foul against the Indians. When they get to 10, of course, Duke will have two shots on the line. One shot. And it's been a struggle for the Duke Blue Devils in their first round matchup against Northeast Louisiana, the Southland Conference champions here at Minneapolis, Metrodome. And a good crowd on hand. It's 39 to 32 in favor of Duke. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham. Game of turnovers thus far, William. Game of turnovers. Very aggressive defense by both teams. Gambling a lot. And that's, it, you might think, looking at the field goal percentages of both teams, shooting well over 60%, that it's a poorly defense, a poor defensive game. But that's not the case. Foul on Bill McCaffrey. Will send uh, Northeast Louisiana to the free throw line. And 
They'll have a chance to narrow the lead. The Indians took the early lead. They were in front by as much as six points. And then an eight to nothing burst by Duke. Move them in front. And right now they have matched their biggest lead of this first half. And Anthony Jones, the Greyhound, they call him in Monroe, on the line shooting. Story here. The winner will go against Iowa against East Tennessee State. That'll be a real tough matchup later on. And then two more games tonight. Mr. Jennings. <laughs> Keith Mr. Jennings at 5'7". The great little man of this country, I would think, huh? Yeah, he leads the country in three-point field goal percentage, shooting over 60%. Early, dishing off in the side to Christian Layton. McCaffrey, he's been hot early. Picking up the loose ball was Casey Jones and a chance to narrow the five-point lead by Duke. The Indians have given a great account of themselves, coming in as a 15th seed. Carlos Funches from the corner makes it a five-point, think of a three-point game, excuse me. 39 to 36. Thomas Hill penetrates into the lane. This is his own rebound, knocks it out of bounds to the Indians. You know, one of the problems that they're having right now, Duke, is you can get the good shot. They have to show more patience and get it inside offensively. Bill, at the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. 2.05 remaining in the first half. Anthony Jones up against Leitner. Ball knocked away now, Hurley. Out of control. Grant Hill, the mature freshman. And is he ever? Leitner from the baseline. Christian Leitner has 10. Thomas Hill leads Duke with 13. And that's what their offensive philosophy should be. Get the ball inside. If they help out inside, then swing the ball to the for the open jump shot. At least for a half, they've been given quite a game here by the Hill. And it would be interesting that... In Northeast Louisiana locker room's got to be a lot of energy in there, feeling that they can beat this Duke Paul Club. J.C. Jones at 5'7", try to force it inside to Craig. And here comes a three-on-one fast break. And McCaffrey out of bounds. It is still Duke's ball, and they're going to bring in Brian Davis now. That's one reason you give the ball to the guards. He should have gotten the ball to Hurley and let him make that decision, if anything, to give it back to Hill for the possible layup. Hurley misses a three. Knocked away. Anthony Jones steps on the line. And he looked like he pulled something in trying to save the ball. Uh, they cannot afford to lose him. Now here he's going after the Jones trying to get it. Looks like he slips. Almost looks like he pulled his groin muscle or maybe his rib cage. Between the two, Anthony Jones and Carlos Funches, the one-two punch, they've accounted for 40 of their 84 points. And he's shaken up. That's a tough blow for NLU. And going to the bench will be Anthony Jones. And Rodney Redmond, Redmond will replace him. Anthony Jones. Well, that's a big loss and maybe well hopefully they can hold on for their sake hold on for another minute and seven seconds and have them back for the second half five point lead and the Indians in the maroon with the ball with under a minute to play in the first half Casey Jones working against Hurley and they'll call the foul on Bobby Hurley Second foul on the point guard from Jersey City, New Jersey, who got to the Final Four in his freshman year. The thing about Hurley that impresses me so much is his stamina. This young man has been on the court now for, well, for the 19 minutes that he's coming out because of the foul problem going into the second half. But his stamina is just phenomenal. He picks up full court, the defensive pressure. He's beating, and he's, he's facing the defensive pressure by Chris um, against uh, Casey Jones. So he's... He's just something. Bill McCaffrey will replace Hurley. Chris Kreese comes in for Philip Craig for the final seconds. And uh, we will have a shot clock for about 1.8 seconds. It'll be off for 1.8. 45-second shot clock with 46.8. Pressure by NLU in the backcourt. 
They get back and the reverse layup and a fine play by Thomas Hill who has 15 points. He has surpassed his season's average. He's been the finisher uh, on the fast breaking opportunities for Duke in this first half. Shot clock is turned off now for the final second. And they're going to call Redmond for the offensive foul. He was out of control at the top of the key. So Duke will have an opportunity. And right there we see the 13 turnovers. That's what they average per game for the whole season this year. That just tells you about the pressure they're seeing today against the Blue Devils. Bobby Hurley quickly checks back in the lineup for the final 16 seconds of this first half. And they're going to call a technical foul, I think, on the bench. Yes, they did against Coach Mike Vining. He seems such an easygoing fellow when we chatted with him yesterday. Technical power. He's easygoing, but he wants this win so badly, as he told us about their, what their goals were there for this year. Number one, to have the most wins in the history of the school, which they accomplished with 25. To win the Southland Conference Championship again, which they did for the second time this year. And, of course, their ultimate goal, winning, a, you know, a one NCAA game. And we understand it was on one of the assistant coaches and not Mike Vining. So it's... A bench technical nonetheless, and of course, a 15th seed has never won an NCAA tournament game. And, uh, you know, facing against facing a Duke team, as good as they are, that even makes it tougher. Well, right now, Duke has matched their biggest lead of the game, seven points, and a chance to move ahead of that number with the final seconds of this first half. Grand Hill going strong to the hoop, no basket, and a foul before the shot. That just tells you something about the versatility of this Grant Hill. Here's a freshman that the coach says, here, you take the ball down the court against the pressure, and now they isolate trying to get him going to the basket. He's some basketball player. And in the last six games, he has led Duke in rebounding. So it just tells you he can go inside, he can go outside. He's only a freshman. Grant Hill on the line. Brian Davis replaced Bobby Hurley. That was the tenth foul against the Indians, so it'll be two shots for Grant Hill. Would have been anyway. Even if it had not been... Well, it was not in the act of shooting, but he gets two. Hill is not an outstanding free throw shooter at 62%. That's something that he can work on in the next couple of years. Yeah, right now I would expect Duke to put full court pressure on the, um, the Indians, making it difficult for them to get the ball down the court and get a shot opportunity with six and a half seconds left. Eight point lead, biggest of the game for Duke. Redmond with the shot and hits the shot at the buzzer. And that'll do it for the first half, but we'll see what happens with Anthony Jones, the leading scorer for NLU, as he got hurt just before the half. Here's the shot. And here's the defensive pressure. Davis comes over to help. What a shot. Pulls up on the dime and hits that fadeaway jumper. A two-point basket by Rodney Redmond, and that's the end of the first half with the score. The Duke Blue Devils 46 and the Northeast Louisiana Indians 40. And CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the United States Marine Corps, the fuel, the prowl, the Marines. Power stick, antiperspirant, the power that puts you in control. And by Visa, honored at over 8 million places worldwide. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Minneapolis and the number two seed in the Midwest region, Duke, is leading Northeast Louisiana by six. Andrea Joyce back in New York along with Mike Francesa and Mike did Northeast Louisiana already have its day in the or its moment in the in the spotlight by leading Duke for the first part of this game. I think you hit it right on the head. Their best players hurt. Duke's got its wake up call. Too tough on the baseline. I don't think this game will get any closer than it is now. Duke will win it going away.
question there, but look at the key thing, the turnovers. Early, Duke committed most of them, but an 11-1 edge for Duke in the last 15 minutes, and they turned a deficit into a lead. Anthony Jones with 14, and Thomas Hill with 15 are the respective leaders. What can we anticipate in the second half, Bill? There's one big thing. Does Northeast Louisiana have the ability to overcome the defensive pressure applied by Duke? I think they're going to have to open up the court more to allow some lanes to penetrate and get some easy baskets. And I think the first few minutes will be important as well. And we'll return to Minneapolis after this message and a word from your local station you're watching cbs sports exclusive coverage of the ncaa basketball championship first round of the ncaa basketball championship is sponsored by oldsmobile stop by your oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of olds state farm insurance like a good neighbor state farm is there and by hertz whether you rent a car for business or pleasure hertz is america's wheels Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham back at the Metrodome where Duke leads Northeast Louisiana 46 to 40 and good news for the Indians because Anthony Jones who bruised his lower back when he fell about a minute left. Here's how it happened. Well hustling after this basketball and he, he just pulled that back. The interesting thing is does it stiffen up on him. Does he become a little tentative out here in the first part of the game of the second half. We'll see early 14 points to lead. The Indians, and he's in action now. Casey Jones flipping inside to Craig. The open man, Anthony Jones, his first shot, front rims it. Rebound by Layton. Grand Hill. I think the first few minutes are going to be really critical because Duke has a chance to open it up here. Let's see if they do. They do, and, and they'll open it up at the defensive end of the court and offensively getting it inside to the big guy. Leitner fouled from behind, and it was Chad Jacobs who commits the foul. Duke has not lost a game this season when they've been up at halftime. So that also bodes well for the Blue, the Blue Devils. Other games in first round action, as you saw from Louisville and College Park. Missing from the baseline is Kubek. And now in the hands of Chad Jacobs. So it's a six-point game. Northeast Louisiana in their fourth NCAA tournament. Second in a row, they were ousted by Purdue in the first round last year. Leitner with a good stop at the baseline. And Funches, I don't know how he got the shot up. Uh, I think he took an extra step, but what we see <laughs> offensively, what they're doing is they're running a lot more screens on the baseline, trying to open up the court. Early to Leitner. Beautiful from the point guard to the big guy. Leitner right now has 12 points. Now, Christian Leitner probably doesn't get the credit is due to him, probably because he's a junior. You know, he's had 17 double-doubles this year. Danny Ferry, the great All-American player of the year, only had 10 his senior year. Huh? Jones for three, and that's Anthony Jones. Hits his first three-point basket. Right now, he looks pretty good to us. You see how you're right. That lower back doesn't hurt at all when you hit a three. They're the three-point shooting in Northeast Louisiana, three of five. Duke has possession. 48 to 45, so the Blue Devils did not extend their lead at the start in the first couple of minutes anyway of the second half. Well, I think this team went off the court in Northeast Louisiana feeling very good about themselves, saying in the locker room, hey, we can compete against this Duke team. Thomas Hill with an open jumper. Casey Jones to Anthony Jones. Hill is back defensively, and look at that move around Thomas Hill by Anthony Jones, the Greyhound. Well, he showed some quickness on that one. 19 points brings the Indians to within one. Kubek, who's playing with three fouls. Hurley, Thomas Hill, Leitner, and Grand Hill. Here's Hurley going for three, and he's got it. And that is his first of the game. And I'm sure Coach Yashevsky wants the offense run that way. Let's go inside. If they help out, then we'll dish it out, and we'll get the open, uncontested three-point shot. Only the fifth point for Bobby Hurley, but he has seven assists to go with it. Chad Jacobs overplaying his Hurley against the point guard, Casey Jones. Grand Hill gives the baseline to Anthony Jones and gets the basket in the foul. Who is this guy, Anthony Jones? Well, I know he scored 37 against Arkansas. Pretty good outing against one of the top seeds in this tournament. Now watch this great catch, and now the presence of mind, that hesitation in beating Grand Hill to the basket. And now here's the present one. A spin move, going baseline. Kubek doesn't get over there quick enough. 
hanging in the air again. What did he do? He made sure he drew the contact to get to the foul line and then was fortunate enough to make the best. Christian Leitner commits his second foul and Anthony Jones with a three-point conversion. He is nine for 12 from the field and the Blue Devils lead has been cut to one. And we see the first three minutes they have not committed a turnover against the Blue Devil defense. Nice muscling by Leitner against both Craig and Jacobs. Leitner with 14. Thomas Hill still leads Duke with 15 points. And that's the big mismatch against this Indians ball club because they don't have the size of the strength to compete physically against Christian Leitner. Bunches goes baseline and they'll call him for the offensive foul as Thomas Hill had position. Second foul on Funches. Now here's, look at that defense by Hill, stepping over there, helping his teammate. Just, just great defense. Hey, is defense what it's all about with Coach K? That's when you become a team, when you're an excellent defensive ball club, because offensively, one player can have the hot hand, and then carry a ball club, but everybody has got to be on the same page. Pressure by Anthony Jones on Hill. 53 to 52. Kick ball, and they're going to reset the clock to 45 again. Georgia and Pitt are all tied up. Southeast Conference against Big East, and opening up a nine-point lead is Oklahoma State in College Park. Early is wide open. He'll try a three. No, he'll pass to Leitner, and Leitner will get fouled. How often do you see a guard have that much room for a three and pass it up? Well, that's Bobby Hurley thinks pass first. And he was just so aware of Leitner and knows that there's a mismatch. That young man is an awfully smart basketball player. Of course, playing for his dad at St. Anthony's in Jersey City has uh, helped him a great deal. That's Philip Craig who picked up his third foul. He is the first Indian to pick up three in this game. Here's Leitner, 76% free throw shooter. Came in averaging 20 a game and over nine rebounds. Junior from Angola, New York, getting better and better, and playing in Europe really helped him last season. Playing for Mike Krzyzewski on the world team, he just felt that it made him tougher, more focused as a basketball player, and a great experience for him, and that's, uh, he thinks, the big reason for the improvement in his play. The lead is five for Duke. They had a six-point lead at halftime. At the hole, 32 white. And Christian Leitner gets hit with his third foul. Away from the ball. We all know that fourth foul, if it came early on Christian Leitner in the second half, would be a big, big fourth foul. How are the Indians staying in this game? How about 67% shooting from the field? And no turnovers. That's the key. They had 13 in the first half. Their average for this regular season. Or maybe they know that and they don't want to go behind it. Well, you got to give the coach the credit, Coach Vining, because he, he made an adjustment at halftime. He's running people off the baseline, a little different offensive set, and that's Duke has not been able to create the turnovers. Casey Jones off the glass, out of bounds, Duke. And we'll take a break here with nearly five minutes gone by in the second half. Tight game. We got some tradition here at Northeast Louisiana. That's Todd Enlow, whose dad Tommy was one of the great all-time guards at NLU, and Scott Bird had a brother Jeff, who just finished a four-year career last year, and for 37 straight years has been a player on the Indian squad who had a brother or a cousin or an uncle or a father who played for the school earlier. Huh? That's great. It's called linear tradition. For uh, they left with a great experience. Otherwise, people wouldn't follow in their footsteps. Southland Conference champions. They had to beat Florida a and for the play-in, and they're giving Duke all they can handle here in the first round. And here they go with the full court trap, trying to beat Hurley. Davis, Hill, Kubek, Hurley, and Leitner are the five in there for Duke right now. And Hurley misses a three. The rebound, Davis. Kubek. He misses, and the rebound is by Chris Kreese. So, in the lineup now for the Indians, the point guard Casey Jones, Anthony Jones, who has scored 22 points as the other guard, and up front it's Philip Craig, Carlos Funches, and Chris Kreese, who lays it in. 
you know, this guy, Casey Jones, is really something. The way he's competing against Hurley and having to lead this team against this Duke pressure. Ryan Davis fouled inside. So far in this second half, Anthony Jones has scored eight of the Indians' 12 points. This is how Hurley is done with Anthony Jones, because you're looking at a point guard Hurley and a shooting guard at Jones there. But Jones has 10 points in the first half, and he only averages nine points a game, so he's really stepped up for this tournament. That was on Anthony Jones, his first of the game, and here's Brian Davis. With a good free throw shooter for the Blue Devils. Junior from Capitol Heights, Maryland. Davis did not start today. They went with the senior, Greg Kubek. Duke is 11 of 13 from the free throw line, and the possession arrow will favor the Blue Devils on the tie-up. Now, that was a dangerous play by Leitner. A great aggressive offensive rebound, but he could have picked up his fourth foul. Duke is leading by only four points, 56 to 52, with five minutes gone by in the second half. Leitner goes in, went right around the big man. Well, that's the thing about Leitner. He can go inside, he can go outside. It's Danny Ferry was the same way. It was different, though. Danny Ferry would start on the perimeter and then post up, where it goes. Leitner goes from the post up, and then he'll pop out. An offensive foul. Every offensive foul has been an out-of-control situation. Three for Casey Jones. Again, because of the pressure put on her by Hurley, and there's the excellent step in by Davis. Leading 58 to 52, Christian Leitner opens the lead to eight points, which matches the biggest lead of the game for the Duke Blue Devils, and Leitner now with 20 points. And the man that has to step up for the Indians right now is Philip Craig. Not offensively, but defensively. He's got to get around, make it tougher on Leitner to, to get that post-up position, because all he's doing is going down and getting the easy inside position. Carlos Funches is double team, looking for help. Anthony Jones, and there is Funches inside. Carlos Funches, 12 points, and Anthony Jones is 22, so that's 34 of the 54 points of the Indians by their 1 2 punch. This has not been a breeze for Duke by any means so far. Hill in the lane, rebound by Davis. And a foul against the Indians. That'll be their 16 foul. One more, and Duke will be in the bonus. Anytime you see penetration by a player to the basket, it creates a situation where for easier opportunities on the offensive boards for that team. And that's what we saw with Tom Hill penetrating to the basket. Anthony Smith, a 6'8 freshman from Plaquemine, Louisiana, will come in for the Indians, and Antonio Lang, another freshman who's been in earlier, replaces Christian Leitner, who goes out with 20 points. Meanwhile, Carlos Funches, with three fouls, remains in the game for NLU. Ryan Davis hits the first free throw. Christian Leitner has really made his presence felt here in the second half for Duke. He is four for four from the field and has scored 10 points of his 20 already. And one time he was double teamed in the low post. He swung it back out to Hurley for an easy opportunity for a three point shot. Eight point lead, that's been the biggest Duke has been able to manage. time I think for Northeast Louisiana. Oh absolutely they have to make sure they get the good shot opportunity right here and now there's a quicker Duke ball club on the court defensively. And inside Chris Kreese has his shot blocked by Grant Hill. Duke coming back the other way and it's still going to be Blue Devils possession. In the West Region in Salt Lake City, also getting underway today, Seton Hall and Pepperdine will be the first game of the four scheduled for that region. 
Randhill goes all the way in and gives Duke its biggest lead, 64 to 54. The thing I love about Grand Hill is how strong he goes to the basket, and he really finishes off what he starts out to do when he takes it to the basket. Seven minutes have gone by in the second half. Duke showing signs of opening up this game against the 15th seed Indians of Northeast Louisiana. No 15th seed has ever won a game in this tournament. What they have to do is get the ball to one of their two key people. Casey Jones draws the foul. The foul is against Hurley. It'll be his third. McCaffrey will check in and give Bobby Hurley some time on the bench. Now, what we're seeing right now is one of the reasons that it's such an uphill battle for Northeast Louisiana because of the bench that Mike Krzyzewski has to go to and the way he utilizes it. You know, we saw it in the first half how effective they were, shooting 7 for 10 against 2 for 4 for Northeast Louisiana. And that's what happens because of the fatigue factor then steps into the picture. Why do you think Northeast Louisiana has really given Duke up to this point more than they could handle? I think one of the reasons is they're coming off, they're winning 16 consecutive games. The coach's preparation, he has them feeling good about themselves. Grand Hill inside, there's Antonio Lang with the follow-up. Duke is doing it off the offensive board. Exactly right, Dick. Now we're seeing that they're wearing down a little bit. They're not reacting to the, to the defensive boards in the fashion they did in the first half. A deep team, Northeast Louisiana. Funches misses a three, lying the rebound. Got to have patience with the offensive end of the court, and that's one that time down the court they didn't have. Looking for Lang inside. Thomas Hill hits a three. Boy, he's having some game for the Blue Devils. 18 points for Thomas Hill. And his first three-point basket of the game. And it is now 69 to 56. Duke has some breathing room. Heat inside is thrown away, taken off by Thomas Hill on another turnover. Thomas Hill is just doing everything for the Blue Devils today. Hitting threes, getting out and running on the break. McCaffrey, he's got a three, two in a row by Duke. And they're opening it up. You know, Mike Lining's got to think about a timeout. I know he only has two left, but, you know, with Duke pulling away right here with Christian Leitner and Hurley sitting on the bench. An 8 to nothing run right now for Duke. That's what they used in the first half to turn a deficit into a lead. They're using it right now to open up a big 72 to 56 advantage. AC Jones has it stripped away. McCaffrey, head of the field to Brian Davis. Yep. And it's Brian Davis, and it's 10 straight points run off by the Duke Blue Devils now. And we see the Blue Devils just wearing them down at the defensive end of the court. There's that timeout. Timeout. Duke three, on a 10 to nothing run here in round the one. East region with seven minutes remaining. Georgia 58, Pittsburgh. And welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. First round action in the Midwest region, and Duke with a 10 to nothing run has opened up a 74-56 lead. By the way, regularly scheduled daytime programming has been preempted so that we may bring you exclusive live coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Regularly scheduled daytime programming will resume on Monday. Carlos Funches. Rebound, Casey Jones. Beating Funches inside, and it's still NLU ball. But what's happening now to Casey Jones, he's penetrating, but Duke is doing such a good job defense collapsing around him, he's having a difficult time finding the open man. Going, uh, Philip Craig has come in and Anthony Smith is out for the Indians. Duke has outscored Northeast Louisiana 40 to 20 in the front court. No surprise. None whatsoever when you have a Christian Leighton. And there's excellent defense by the Blue Devils for forcing a turnover. Mike Vining looking for the win. That was, he told you, the last goal we had become the first 15th seed team ever to win a game in this championship. Uh, he's he's got to be proud of his kids the way they're competing out here. And on the turnover, this is a three on zip. Carlos Funches. <laughs> yeah. Slammed up. Oh, a little 
a spin move. I always hold my breath on those. Can you imagine if he missed it? Oh, Kubek was out of bounds. You're not allowed to do that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Here's the dunk. Huh? Now, let's see. Spinning. And the ball almost pops out of the net, if I'm not mistaken. Watch it. Now, if that ball, it almost did. It would not be two points. Senior from McGee, Mississippi, Carlos Funches. Mom is a kindergarten teacher and dad is a junior high school coach. Great guy to have on a squad, according to Mike Vining. I just loves him. Just loves the personality, the leadership he brings to his ball club. Other scores of games in progress. Funches goes right around Hill and is fouled by Antonio Lang. That'll be the 15th foul against Duke. The Indians have committed six. Now, right now, Northeast Louisiana's got to gamble a little bit, especially at the defensive end of the court. I, I would think that they'd have to pick up with a little defensive pressure, try to make that steal, try to create and get some easy opportunities to get some momentum back on their side. Thomas Hill with 18, second leading scorer to Christian Leitner's 20, leaves the game, and you saw Bobby Hurley check back in. Funches, who came in averaging 19 a game, looking for his 16th point of this game, and the other part of the 1-2 dynamite duo of Northeast Louisiana, Anthony Jones is 22. He only got one free throw that time. Seventy-four to fifty-nine. Duke Lang, good-looking freshman who started seven games early in the year. He is Grand Hill's roommate. And the thing about the move is he went to his left. You know, he's right-handed. For a freshman to have that versatility is really something. J.C. Jones foul driving to the basket. Hey, you guys talk to him. You got to jump and have Casey Jones has given Bobby Hurley everything he can handle today, being able to take the ball to the basket, creating a lot of opportunities for teammates. Four on Hurley. And let's see if he's taken out by Mike Krzyzewski. Thomas Hill off the bench. And Hurley will sit down. Hurley so far has scored five points in the game and has seven assists. And that doesn't tell the story, though, about a Bobby Hurley and how he's helping his ball club. Stat sheets will not tell the story because he does it with his tenacious defense, making the passes, get the team into the set offense. Those are the important things for his team. That's why we won't give any of the stats the rest of the team. No. <laughs> in the lane, Funches hits it in the lane. But you're right about Hurley. A lot of players, the things just don't appear on the numbers. The inspiration, all of those things. That's what the point guard's got to do. McCaffrey comes right back in the lane, goes after his rebound, finds the ball in his hands almost by accident and scores. He's got 13, and there are four Duke players in double figures. Lead is 17 for Duke. Chris Kreese. Thomas Hill, the rebound. Ryan Davis, along with Kubek, head forward. Small team in there for the Duke Blue Devils, but a quick team. Davis and goaltending called against Funches. And that's what that quick team can do, penetrate to the basket. And Christian Leitner checks back in the game, but will take a timeout when the lead is up to 19 for Duke. More first round action tonight in the NCAA tournament. UConn against LSU, Big East against Shaquille O'Neal back in action. Syracuse against Richmond, St. Francis against Arizona, and Coastal Carolina against Indiana. First round tonight on CBS. The whole tournament exclusively on CBS from start to finish. Christian Leitner, as we said, back in the game. Craig, with one of his rare offensive forays, but it's tipped in by Crease. And here Kim, comes that full-court defensive pressure. Man-to-man, -man, they'll look to double-team and rotate. McCaffrey pulls up. Good game for McCaffrey. He has scored 15 points. Came in averaging 12. 
Georgia and Pitt are in overtime in the first round action in Louisville. Air ball thrown up by Funches and Anthony Jones follows it up. I'll tell you, the thing you love about Funches, he is not saying goodnight to this game, boy. He's out there competing as hard as he possibly can. Anthony Jones, though, had a long drought. 24 points for Jones. After 14 at the half, been a while since he had scored. Problem with a back muscle that sent him to the sidelines in the last minute of the first half. He's played all the way in the second half. Lang looking for Leighton. Lang very active was coming off the bench today. Oh, you, you just look at this Duke ball club, they're all going to be back next year. Kubek and Clay Buckley, a backup center, are the only seniors on the squad. That's right. Better things ahead for Mike Krzyzewski. Not that things have been so bad for him. There are not many people feeling sorry for Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke program. Six minutes to go in this game. Brian Davis tries to split the middle and is called for the offensive foul. That was a bad decision by Brian Davis. He had uh, Grant, Tommy, um, Thomas Hill was wide open on the baseline for an easy 10-foot jump shot. Is it a tendency for teams that are open up a big lead after a close game against what may be an inferior opponent as far as level, all of a sudden to get reckless? Get, get careless. You're exactly right, Dick. And that's something that, you know, Mike Krzyzewski uh, just doesn't tolerate. He's a guy who hasn't been reckless much. Grant Hill coming in for Lang. And Chad Jacobs has checked in. Well, Duke had problems early. Six early turnovers, but they protected the ball well the rest of the way. They might have been a little nervous coming into this ball game, and that might have been one of the reasons for those turnovers. Anthony Jones against Layton. No way he'll challenge him. Here's Chad Jacobs. Jacobs again. Slam through, and the basket will it count or not? And they'll call offensive interference on the top by Chris Kreese. No basket. And that, was, that was awfully close coming off that rim. I couldn't tell from this angle. Can't really tell from that angle if it came off or not, but it was close. As he held onto the rim when it did go through. Well, he had somebody under him, so he might have been trying to make sure he didn't hurt himself. Ryan Davis misses. Leighton will try to jam. Scramble for the loose ball. Winds up in the hands of Duke and a foul called against Chris Kreese. Uh, they are scrapping here, even though they're down 82 to 65 with 5.16 to go. Hit in the eye or in the nose bridge was Thomas Hill. Okay. Now here's, here's the ball coming off the rim. Now that was that was a good call by the officials. Part of the ball was still over the cylinder. Grant Hill got hit on the bridge of the nose. He appears to be all right. Seven team fouls for both squads. So the bonus is in effect. Priest with his third, and here is Grant Hill on the line shooting one and one. You look at this Duke ball club, and you look at the flexibility Mike Krzyzewski has. You know, Grant Hill, he can bring the ball up the court. He can go to the forward position. As you mentioned, uh, Dick, he has led the team in rebounding. He can move Hill to the guard position. He can go play a forward. Rodney Redman in the game now for NLU. Misses the shot outside, and a good pass that time from Brian Davis to Bill McCaffrey, who has 17 points. And all started by Grant Hill getting the rebound and taking it out strong on the dribble. Well, Duke leads by 19, and they have a 16-point edge, or 26-point edge, off the bench. So that's been a big part of what this game has been all about, the depth of the Blue Devils. Kreese missing from inside, from outside, and Funches will go to the line to shoot one and one. Anthony Jones back in the game. Second foul against Thomas Hill. Jones has been the leading scorer with 24 for the Indians, and he replaces Chad Jacobs. Game is still going on in overtime. Pitt leading Georgia by a bucket. Oh, here we go. Yo, here. 
Duke, by the way, came in with a record of nine and seven against the field. That's not that an impressive record. Nine wins is good, but they're almost at 500. Several of those teams, though, they have played on the road. You know, playing in Arizona, at Arizona, and uh, you know, those are the things I think Mike Shishovsky likes to do to get his team tournament ready. McCaffrey, Davis with the follow, but it was Leitner who kept it in play. Davis. Mike Shishovsky told us he was glad that he had the earliest game in this first round. He said, "We just want to finally get into this thing." Anthony Jones spins his way in. Grant Hill comes down with it. Winding down to four minutes to go in the game, and Hill goes end to end for the Blue Devils. Yeah, well, you see the cheerleaders. They know what, what's going to happen, but they should be awfully proud of their basketball team. Not bad, you know, achieving two of their three goals. Grant Hill again. You wanted to make a comment about Grant Hill before? You can do it now. <laughs> the young man is just going to be, not that he isn't now, but he's going to be a star. Uh, this kid just uh, can play all, he contributes in all phases of the game. He's got greatness written all over him. 90 to 67, but a lot closer than the score is indicated here. And just the toughness, more than anything, the mental toughness of this Duke ball club. Anthony Jones has it batted from behind by Grand Hill, who has taken over this game now. Good pass to Thomas Hill and Leitner with a layup, and now Duke is putting on a teamwork clinic. And they're doing it at the defensive end of the court. An 8 to nothing run by Duke. They have had two 8 nothing runs and a 10 nothing run in this game. Laying it in is Casey Jones. And Mike Krzyzewski is going to empty his bench right now after the timeout. timeout. We'll see three players we haven't seen before, and we'll tell you who they are when we come back to the Metrodome in just a minute. Well, you're right. Those cheerleaders should have a lot to be proud of, but Duke is went up 92-69 to 69 with 2.44 remaining in this game. There is Marty Clark, a freshman from Westchester, Illinois, in the backcourt now with Bobby Hurley. Crawford Palmer, 6'9", junior from Arlington, has come in the game as way with, along with Clay Buckley, one of the two seniors. Palmer lays it in for Duke. All right, with Duke in control of this one, Tommy we'll keep you posted. Amager. But right now, we want to send you out to the overtime game in Louisville. It's Georgia and Pittsburgh. Let's join Sean McDonough and Bill Walton. Looks like Georgia is going to spread their half-court offense and run some time off the clock. I hope they know that they're behind. Cole guarded by Porter. Wilson, strong drive, lost it. Jones and McNeil converge. It looked like Antoine Jones stripped him. Now a foul. Miller fouled in the backcourt by Harvey. Miller is one of the best free throw shooters in the nation. Four fouls on Antonio Harvey. Nice drive by Marshall Wilson. Gets in the lane. Beautiful strip by Antoine Jones. Goes right in there. Officials just laid off the whistle. Let him play. And the Georgia Bulldogs say, we blew this one, guys. Sean Miller set a Big East record for free throw shooting this year. 92.3%. Gotta love Sean Miller. Got a fused bone in his foot. A sub Taylor joint. Very, very difficult to ever play with a fused bone in your body, particularly in your foot. He's just, you know, real steady and courage out there. Now Georgia needs two possessions with 39 seconds left. They trail by four. Wilson for three. Air ball. Underneath, Harvey, too strong, short of the rebound. Pit by four with the ball with 25 seconds left in overtime. And they foul Miller again. You might as well put two more on the board for Pitt. Latell Green just can't believe that he didn't get in this ball game, but I believe that Pittsburgh's got to feel very good. They're great at killing the clock at the end of the game. They got great free throw shooters. They got Sean Miller, who will shoot two here. They got Jason Matthews, Glover, who is a non-entity this season before today's game. I think Paul Evans has got to be ecstatic with their with their position right now. 21 seconds, soon to be a six-point lead. 
And a disappointing day as you look at Miller for Rod Cole, who just fouled out. Perhaps the last game of his career at Georgia. Six points today, just one of four from the floor. Why did he only take four shots? He's usually a big scorer for them, averaging 10 points a game. Latero Green out. Bobby Martin sitting on the bench there. Says, I, I live another day. Six-point lead for the Panthers. 20 seconds remaining. 20, 20. Patton to half the lead. Georgia ball with 13 remaining. First round coverage continues. Following this game, Pepperdine and Seton Hall, New Orleans, Kansas, Southern Miss and NC State, and East Tennessee State and Iowa. Wilson missed the three. McNeil the rebound. Pittsburgh will advance to the second round. <laughs> the Chevrolet players of the game Marshall Wilson for Georgia and Tim Glover for Pittsburgh. Glover has scored only 14 points all season. He had appeared in just 15 games. Glover had 12 points. Wilson had 22 for Georgia. Again, the final score in overtime. Pittsburgh 76, Georgia 68. Now let's send you back to New York and Andrea Joyce. guys so the Pitt Panthers win it in overtime 76 to 68 now let's take you out to the finish of Northeast Louisiana Duke Duke with the big lead here's Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham in Minneapolis might be the one that would have to move to the lead guard position for this ball club free throw missed by Scott Bird he's out of Laurel Mississippi a junior 28-point lead for the Duke Blue Devils, and they'll go on to play the winner of the game coming up next here at the Metrodome between Iowa of the Big Ten and East Tennessee State of the Southern Conference. Well, Duke got a pressured in the first half, but their defense and interplay, inside play, sparked by Leitner, sparked them, Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham, and wrapping this game up with 35 seconds to go. The depth of this Duke Blue Devil team, their bench contributed so much for them offensively and defensively, and the inside play. They just did a great job handling the basketball after the first five minutes, and I've had about three or four turnovers the remainder of this game. They won going away, but the first half was closely contested. Duke will advance to the second round. Out of a region they're not used to, the Midwest. They're familiar with the East. That's gotten them to the final four of three straight years. So the Indians of Northeast Louisiana fall prey to the second seed Duke Blue Devils, who will now advance to the second round. Mike Vining, Mike Krzyzewski. As Duke moves along, the final score, 102 to 73. The winner will, Duke will play the winner of Iowa and East Tennessee State. In the second round coming up on Saturday. And the Chevrolet players of the game are Anthony Jones of Northeast Louisiana. He scored 24 points in his final game of his career. And Christian Leitner of Duke, he had 22 to lead the Blue Devils. So Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham reporting from the Metrodome and a fine crowd here. As Duke rolls up 102 points and wins. 102 to 73. Right now, let's send you to New York and Andrea Joyce. All right, so Duke takes its first step down the road to the Final Four. Duke Blue Devils, of course, looking for their fourth consecutive trip to the Final Four. Andrea Joyce, along with Mike Francesa, back in New York. Now, let's tell you that in the second game of our afternoon doubleheader, some of you will see Pepperdine against Seton Hall. That's the winner of the West Coast Conference against the champion, of course, from the Big East. Others will see other games this afternoon, including East Tennessee State and Mr. Jennings against Iowa. And we will be back with more as the road 
road to the Final Four continues after this message. Joe Gary. Time soap operas and the like. This is our control room where we are bringing in all kinds of games. First round coverage of the 1991 NCAA tournament. Mike Francesa and Andrea Joyce back in the studio in New York. And Mike Pitt just advanced to the second round with an overtime win over Georgia. Georgia actually had a 10 point lead though in the second half. What did Pitt do to pull this one out? Well, they hit some threes, came back, got a good play, some good play out of shorter too. But you watch a Pitt team that has talent and senior leadership. Maybe they can gain a little momentum. Kansas should be next after playing New Orleans. They could be very tough. All right, let's bring you up to date now on what else has happened so far this afternoon. New Mexico and Oklahoma state out in the east region oklahoma state picks up the win 67 to 54 and in minneapolis it was duke over northeast louisiana and we will continue down the road to the final four after a short break Taking on Duke in the Midwest Regional. This game being played at the Metrodome in Minneapolis side of the Final Four next year. Duke seeded number two. The Indians seeded number 15. A 15 seed has never beaten a number two seed. This would have been one of the biggest upsets in first round tournament history. Bobby Hurley trying to bounce back from a rugged ACC tournament game. The Indians. Anthony Jones. There's that man out racing McCaffrey for the ball right there. And then Jones right here. The errant pass. Another layup. Jones a big ball game, but Duke would recover. Thomas Hill really emerges as a player, makes the steal, and finishes the play. Duke led it 46 to 40, though. The Indians hanging tough after 20 minutes. But in the second half, Northeast Louisiana, Carlos Funches, look at the 360. They got a lot of guys that can dunk on that team, Dick. He had 19 points, but Duke just too much. Grant Hill to Brian Davis to McCaffrey. McCaffrey had 17 points. One more time, Davis, Thomas Hill. The Leitner, the big guy, Phil Milan, and Coach K and Duke move on into the second round. They won it going away by a final of 102 to 73. The first loss for Northeast Louisiana. They break that 16-game winning streak. Thomas Hill had 20 points, 17 for McCaffrey, as I said. Northeast Louisiana, they shoot 61% in the first half just to stay close. Then they shoot 33% in the second half, and they don't stay close. Christian Leitner. As usual, carrying things, Northeast Louisiana, one of the smallest teams in the tournament, the second smallest, as a matter of fact, and Leitner dominated 22 points, 8 of 12, perfect from the free throw line. This guy's a tremendous center. You knew the Indians were going to have trouble with this small lineup stopping him. Well, Mr. Versatility can play inside, outside. The thing I like about Christian Leitner, he takes some really good shots. To me, he's the most valuable player in the ACC. I think his versatility has been so special with this Duke team where they needed size. And he was so effective when he rotated on the interior. They took him right here. Take a look at right here getting high post position. Now they're going to reverse the basketball and get a 45-degree angle as he slides down inside. Now watch them swing the ball over, reverse it. Now he gets great inside position. Now he'll get ready for the drop step. The defense rotates over for help, but very slow coming over. They get the good look to Leitner. There's the drop step, and there's the move to the basket. He is Mr. Versatility. I love Christian Leitner. Indians might have been a sleeper team, but not against Duke in the first round. You know, everybody talks about the importance of depth, and depth is only important if you use it. Some coaches don't like to go more than six or seven. Mike Krzyzewski does, and his bench was really outstanding today with McCaffrey with 17 points and Brian Davis got uh, 13 points. So they could be back to the final four again. Huh, Dick? Hey, Jim, I'll tell you this. You know, they talk about bench using it. 